Hi, I'm Chelsea from Red Shark, and today I'm going to be showing you an After Effects tutorial on how to do a bouncing text effect. And if you want to follow along, go to the link in our description to download the working file. So today I'm going to be showing you this bouncy text effect in Adobe After Effects. So we're just going to type our text out here. And I think this effect works better with a more heavyweight typeface, a larger font. It just looks better when you're dealing with the bounce. And as far as like serif, sans serif, it's just a little bit easier to work with with a sans serif. So we're going to have our text selected. We're going to go up here to layer, create, create shapes from text. We're going to delete this extra text layer and just work with our outlines. And now with those outlines selected, we're going to search path here. And that's going to bring up our controls for all of our path outlines. So I'm just going to go ahead and start a keyframe for all of these. Okay, and then I'm going to drag the timer out a little bit. And what I'm doing here is I want the animation to like end here in the center, so I'm going to select all of these keyframes with them placed there and just pull this out a little bit. Just a couple of seconds. And we can change this later so this doesn't have to be exact. Now I'm going to pull my timer back to the start. And then with those keyframes selected, I'm going to create a new keyframe with the text starting outside of the composition. And this is just because we're going to want our text to drop into the frame. So here it is out of the composition. And if we just played it here, you can see the text is just coming down. It doesn't really have a lot of movement right now, but we'll work with it. So I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to slightly change these because I want this drop to be a little bit more staggered. So I'm going to select the keyframes, but only for the outlines in the top letter. And we're just going to pull that a little bit higher and it's going to fall a little bit quicker because it's going to fall farther than the point that we have at the end point right now of the keyframe. So put it like here and then we are going to go to the end and same thing we're going to start at the top here. We're going to select the keyframes for all of the outlines in our top word and then we're going to pull them down just a little bit farther. So this is going to be a staggered fall. The text is going to be falling a shorter distance and slower than the top word. And we just want this to overlap a little bit. I'm okay with that there. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to go into these individually and pull them up. So they're kind of like going to be squishing onto the text here. So I'm going to direct select the anchor points that I want. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this, double click on it to isolate it from the rest of the word. And I'm going to click on the anchor points that I want. I think I'm just going to do those for now. And then I can add this one, but I'm not going to do it as drastically as I did here. So we don't need to fully clear this letter because we're going to pull the top of this letter down a little, the, of the bottom letters down a little bit to kind of cushion that original bounce. So I'm going to leave that here and just go around and do this for all of the words. Or sorry, all the letters in the top word.
Okay, so now we can preview this little bounce we have. And then they're still pretty far apart, so it's going to go kind of slow. Alright, it's just going to end kind of squished here. I'm going to pull that in a lot closer. Just go ahead and get that out of the way before we start adding a bunch of keyframes. Still a little too fast. Or too slow. I'm going to do like a second here and see if that's fast enough. Okay, that's good enough. Um, we might tighten that up, make it a little bit faster later, but it kind of gets it out of the way for now. So what we're going to do now is we've got our initial bounce where it's kind of compressing here. What we're going to do is now we're going to pull the whole thing back up and then we're going to pull the, um, we're going to leave the bottom of this word where it is and only pull up the top half of these anchor points to reach it and kind of have it bounce back up. So I'm going to do this pretty close because it'll, you know, it's going to be a bounce. It's not going to be a very slow wave. Just gonna go ahead and reselect these keyframes just to make sure that it's actually gonna take when I do this. So I think I'm gonna put this about like here so I have a decent height for this to bounce up to. already a little compressed. I think before we do this I'm actually gonna have it have like a mini bounce where the letters come back up. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull this in actually a little bit closer so we have a different starting point to come off on. So mainly what we're going to be doing here is just trying to hit all of the anchor points that we didn't adjust when we did the first one. So I left pretty much all of them alone on this letter. The only ones I did grab were just these corner ones, the one down here and this side one right here. So I'm going to be selecting everything else and just pulling that back up a little bit. I don't think I want it to come up too much. Just enough for it to have like a little bounce right after. And same thing on this one. I pretty much left all of them alone except for these two bottom ones. I'm going to go ahead and so it still has a little bit of a squish in here and they're kind of different sizes. I don't mind that for this top word. It's going to matter more on the bottom word because we want to keep this totally flat like it's sitting there. So them being a little like different heights, misshapen, I don't mind it there because that one's going to be like bouncing a lot more. What we're going to do now is we're going to 
come in here and select all of the keyframes of the top word. And now I'm going to pull this out just a little bit here. That might be too close. And make another keyframe, and this time this is going to be where this bottom word is going to be bouncing up to meet this. So it's going to have the first drop, bounce, and then it's going to come back up. So I'm going to pull this up. I want it to have a decent height just because these letters are fairly linear and it'll just is a lot easier to make them stretch far where we can't so much with the C and still have it be recognizable or the O, the U's a little bit easier, you can just stretch the straight parts. So I think maybe like right there is good. So what we're going to do with the bottom one now is we're going to have this come up and meet those words. So we're going to have to come in and do this individually again because we don't we don't want to move the whole word. We want the bottom to stay at the height that it's at. So we come in here and select these one by one. And I'm going to be selecting all the parts before it just becomes straight. Okay, and then we're going to go through, I think I actually want this, I want this to come a little bit higher because I want, when I want when it like touches up here, I want it to squish the top word a little bit more. So we're going to do just a little bit here and we're going to come back through and pull that top letter up afterwards. So out of all these letters on the bottom, this one is the weirdest shape to work with. And I think the easiest thing here is to just leave this point here, because if not, it kind of just stretches the middle out weird. Leaving that point in there, even if it messes with the proportions of the letter, it makes it a little bit rec more recognizable as an X than pulling it up and s stretching it out to be kind of like pronged on two ends and very long in the middle. Okay, and so then what we're going to do from here is I'm just going to go back through and select I'm going to select all of these and just go ahead and um, throw a little bit of a smoother on these so the animation isn't so rigid. So you can see here, it starts bouncing. We are going to have to pull at the bottom of this top word so that it bounces back with the letters when they come up. So I'm going to come in at this point, zoom into here, and we are just going to go one by one.
Now it's up. There's a part where this text is going up quicker than the rest of it. So. Okay, it looks like it worked. So what we're going to do here now is pretty similar to what we just did, but just repeating it over. Um, we're going to come through here and we're going to select our last two keyframes. Going to copy and we're going to pull about the same distance right in front and we're going to go ahead and paste those. And yeah, so you start getting this loop. So what you normally do here is you normally go under your expressions here. That's not what I meant to do. Normally you would go under your expressions and you would add a you'd add a loop out and that would loop out the rest of your animations here so it would just keep going. But doing it this specific way, it doesn't let you do it like that. And so kind of like a workaround is going to be manually doing that, which is a little bit frustrating at first, but it works. So I'm just gonna space these out a little bit more. I like how quickly they're bouncing right at the beginning. And I think they could be a little bit slower after that just because it's a continuous one. Once you've done this um, a few times here, it gets decently quicker because you're just going back over the same ones you've already pasted. So. Obviously, depending on how long you're trying to get this to go for, this isn't an ideal way to have it loop out, but for some reason, it just doesn't let you use the loop out expression when you're working with this path keyframe. I want this to be a little bit closer. Okay. So then what we're going to have here is going to be able to watch it all the way through. And then it's just bouncing. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and follow our Instagram for more tips and tricks and sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date with all things RSD.